Hello, everyone. This is Coach Clayton, and this is a women's empowerment interview. And today we have Leslie as our guest, and we're going to discuss her amazing journey overcoming obstacles professionally and personally. And she's going to really inspire our women today, show them, you know, how they can overcome their obstacles in life. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you so much, Coach Clay, for having me on. I am so excited to be here with you this morning. Yes, thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to chat with us. Thank you. <laughs> no yeah. problem. Yeah, so Leslie, let's just dive in, okay? I know that you had discussed that at one point in your life, you were trying to overcoming the feeling of having to seek validation from others. How, how was that? How did you overcome it? Let's let's just dive in. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and so, yeah, I went through a period of my life where um, I was unsure of myself, right, because of some circumstances. And I grew up being a confident, you know, um, young lady, um, knowing my self worth. But sometimes life happens to you, situations happen to you that begin to make you question that. And so I remember when I was in graduate school, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be, you know, I'm very candid and transparent. Uh, I went from an undergraduate, I went to a um, HBCU mm -hmm. and then I went to a um, predominantly white institution for graduate school. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I was the only uh, woman of color mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, in my classes, in my, in my classes. And so I experienced some racism um, from some of my professors, and that began this um, this self doubt, this self worth, uh, and um, it, it led me down a path of not really feeling that I was valued and needed to seek validation from other people, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, I didn't even realize it at the time, right? I didn't even realize it wasn't until like years later that I looked back and saw how that was a, that was planted in me, right? And it started me on a path of like playing small, yeah. uh, always needing other people's opinion before I do something, um, sitting in the back all the time, not really um, speaking up. And I was the total opposite <laughs> kind of before that. And um, one day I just was like, this is not me. Like what, what's happening? And so I began to really look at who I was, right. Mm -hmm. And kind of go, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm spirit filled. Right? And so I uh, believe in Jesus Christ and all that. So I, so I really, you know, began to look at who God said I was. Right. And so that kind of began my transformation. And so now I tell people, you know, validation is for parking. <laughs> I like I like that. I'm gonna use that from now on, Leslie. Validation Honey, that is a parking. Is a parking. And so, yeah, and I and the, the analogy with that is so think about you know when you go to a you know a restaurant or a hotel and you have to validate your car, right? And yeah. so give them your keys mm -hmm. and they go park your car. Yeah. And so when you begin to seek validation from other people, you do the same thing with your life, right? Mm -hmm. You do the same thing with your goals, with your dreams, with your vision. Um, you give people control over that, mm. right? And you don't need to do that. Right. <laughs> right? Because, you know, just the mere fact that you are in existence, you're already been, you've already been validated. Like God has already yeah. really validated us. And so mm. we have to begin to understand who we are in him. I and that's what was my journey was. I had to begin to look at who God really said I was, right? He said I was the apple in his eye. You know, he said I was made in his own image. He said I was more than a conqueror. Like he said, you know, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And so hearing them sometimes is not the same thing as really believing that. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So true, so true. And it's amazing that I'm happy that you brought up the fact that going from an HBCU to a majority white, let's just say it, a majority white uh -huh. university or college, that can give you a little bit of um, self-doubt, okay? Because you're not always valued there. You're not, your intelligence is not always praised there. You know what I mean? No. So I'm, yeah, so, so I'm happy that you, that you, um, you took the time out to say what the difference was between mm -hmm. the two. 
Yeah. What would you what would you say to young students, um, African American students or students of color that have that are in a majority white institutions? They feel the microaggressions every day. They feel yeah. the discrimination every day. Mm -hmm. What what would be your um, takeaway or your your um, one advice to them? Um, I think one of the things I would you know really tell them is that you have to you know, believe in who you are, right? You you have to know that uh, you are everything that God has designed and destined you to be and not to allow other people's opinions, not to allow other people's judgments, not to allow other people how they see you through their lens, right? Not to allow that to affect who you are, mm -hmm. right? Never allow anyone to diminish your light. And that's something that I did. I began to, like I said, I began to play small mm -hmm. because um, I felt like whatever I did, it wasn't good enough. Yes. Right? And I remember I had this, you know, one professor and no matter what I did in the class, no matter if I if I wrote, if it took me two weeks to write the paper, if it took me an hour to write the paper, if it took me a day to write or whatever, I always got a C, mm -hmm. average. Mm -hmm. So that began to make me feel like I was just average. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I knew deep down that I was not. That's but right. just seeing that no matter what, it began to just get into my subconscious thinking and um, begin to play, just begin to, as I got older, I began to play, like I said, I began to play small. I would dumb down my successes. I wouldn't tell people that I had two master's degrees. I wouldn't tell people, you know, <laughs> that um, some of the accomplishments and things that I did, I wouldn't open my mouth and say nothing. Mm. I just became average, right? Yeah. Knowing deep down that God had called me for greater, had called me for elevation, had called me to be set apart, to be different. And so um, never allow anybody to diminish your life, to, to dim your life, right? Mm -hmm. Be who you are unapologetically. And interesting that you said, I have a daughter really quickly. Um, she's a senior in college. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we were talking about going to school. Mm -hmm. I instantly told her, you're going to an HBCU. <laughs> Yeah. I don't even care what other school you're applying for. <laughs> it don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where you're going. Yeah. Because I understood because she went to um she went to a private school here and it was predominantly uh white, right? It, it was yeah. predominantly white. And so, but I, you know, I knew that's what she needed in her life. Yeah. And so now she's a senior and she always says, Mom, mm -hmm. every thank you so much for making me go to an HBC. You know, like. And then she talked to her friends who go to PWI and the experience that her friends have totally different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Totally different. Yes. And I can speak to that because my um, youngest daughter, she went to an all white university and completely different than now she is. She's a medical school, but she's in an international medical school with black professors okay yes. world yes. of difference world of difference so yeah that's good that you made her go to the HBCU yes, I made her I was like you can stop applying to all the mother schools honey yeah yes because they need that they need that safe place to fall especially in in college you know what I mean yeah. so I, I'm that that's good that's very good now you have a business, right? Tell me, tell me a little bit about you. You have two master's degrees <laughs> and you have a business. Tell me, what, tell me about your professional career, everything, Leslie. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I run a couple of different um, businesses. And so I started off, you know, in the corporate world and, and, yeah. did, and did very well. I, you know, climbed the corporate ladder, did all of that. But in 2013, my life kind of took a change. Um, I was out on medical leave, recuperating from a major surgery, and I found out my job was going to be displaced. Okay. And so um, at that moment, I had a, a, a one of them talks with God, and I was like, listen, I never want to be in a position where somebody else did take my income. And so I always had an entrepreneur spirit in me. I just never had stepped out on faith, I would say, and, and do it, right? Yeah. And so it was like at that moment, God says, here's your chance. Here's the opportunity do what you know you need, you're supposed to be doing. And so, yeah, so I stepped out on faith. And one of the things I did was I kind of, I, I show people how to take their skill set 
and transition that into their own business. And so what I did was I took what I learned, had garnered, had mastered, had become an expert in the corporate world, and I opened up my own consulting business. So I have a, a training development consulting business, and I create um, training solutions or either I uh, consult with companies on how to uh, best in, in any situation. It doesn't even matter the industry right? Mm-hmm. on how to um, get the results they want from their employees when it comes to training. So it could be on systems. It could be on customer service. It could be on sales, anything. Right. I've been doing that. Um, I was doing that in the corporate world for like 18 years. Okay. And then I transitioned that in 2013 to my own business. So I consult with major corporations in training development. So that was one of the things. Um, yeah, I, I, I love doing that because it allows me to be creative. I get to meet all different types of people and work mm-hmm. with all different types of industries from banking wow. to um, medical to construction, electrical, you name it. <laughs> nice, nice. I've been able to do that. So that's my baby. It's my work solutions. That's the name of my um, training development consulting company. Okay. And then from that, um, because of the fact when I opened up my own business, I wasn't making money right away. So like, oh, you just bam, you just yeah. don't make money right away, right? right. Um, so when that doing that transition and how I ended up, because I'm also in the credit industry. Okay. helping people get back on track with their finances and their credit. I um, had a downturn to my credit while I was transitioning to my business. And so mm-hmm. uh, it now garnered me to be able to now also help people get back on track. So I partner with a company and I help people get back on track with their credit and their finances um, and things like that, because we know credit is not going anywhere. That's right. right? Yes. It dictates a lot that we do. And a lot of times in our communities, we're not really taught about credit mm-hmm. you know we just say what they say are we you know we want to be cash all the time yes <laughs> <laughs> oh yes <laughs> mm-hmm. not understanding um, the importance of having excellent credit and so now I'm just on a mission to really uh, educate empower and equip people when it comes to credit in their finances so okay. that's another baby that I do um, because I love doing that I love it I love it so you have the credit and then you have the consulting. Consulting. And, and then, then you, it's have, coaching. It's a, do you have a coaching coach, component because you're helping have, other women? Yeah. So um, I have a coaching component. Okay. Yeah. Coaching, consulting, and I love credit. I love it. I love it. I yeah. love it. Now, what would be your advice to a woman right now that doesn't want to go back into the office because, you know, people are making people, you know, not remote, what would you, what would be your advice to women who are just starting out um, in their business? Uh, One of the things I would tell uh, women to do in your business is really look at when it comes to starting a business, right? Think about something that you're passionate about. And so uh, something that you would do, even if you wouldn't make money, I know that sounds cliche, (laughs) but uh, it has to be true, right? Because it will feel like a, a job. Right. Uh, The other thing is that you have to set um, clear expectations right in your business, you know, give yourselves um, some grace, give yourself some grace is one of the things I would tell people, because a lot of times we get into business and we have these unrealistic expectations. Yes. Um, <laughs> that it's going to be easy. Right. Mm. That we just gonna make a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they make it seem like, right? Like, I know they do, honey, because <laughs> we look at the success, you know, what we deem success um, from other people. And so we have to recognize that, you know, everything is not an overnight success. And I tell people a lot of times, entrepreneurship really is not for every person. Yes. And we have to be okay with that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's it's hard work. Mm-hmm. It, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Running a couple of business, it's, it's, it's hard work, right? But it's rewarding for me. But it's not for every person. And so even if you don't do a full flown, um, you know, full yeah, fledged okay. business, at least find something that you're passionate about that you can profit from. Because I, I believe everybody can profit from a past profit from their passion, right? Yeah. Find something that you can monetize, right? You can mm-hmm. be able to monetize your skill set. And so if you're good at something in um whatever it is, if it's customer service, if it's you know. Um, hair, whatever it is that you're passionate about that you love to do, then take that um, and start that as a business, but have clear expectations, get you maybe a coach, 
a mentor, somebody who can help you along in the process. Mm -hmm. Um, Because a lot of times people quit too soon on themselves. Don't they? They really do. Because that goes back to what you said, unrealistic, unrealistic expectations, because it takes a while. Don't watch, don't watch Instagram. Don't watch um, these YouTube over success stories that overnight success stories. It takes work and it takes time. And sometimes there's, you could go one or two years without any profits, really. Correct. And, right? And it's yeah. very important, like you said, passion is important because you have to be able to enjoy what you're doing for those times when you're not making any money. Not making no money, honey. <laughs> right? Trust me, I know. And so, <laughs> and so, I, and so in my coaching, so I do coach, um, you know, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Of people starting out and and how do you lay that out right what does that look like for you because again it looks different for everyone okay mm-hmm. and understanding that you know you have to know your why and so yes. your why got to be so strong mm-hmm. that if you don't make a sale in a whole year you still gonna keep going it's true it's true and yes. like you and like you said a lot a lot of um a lot of people or we're speaking of women a lot of women will quit too quick, not realizing that it's a journey. It's not going to be overnight. It's a journey. And you have to keep going forward. Even when you don't see any progress, you have to keep going forward. So yeah, I'm so happy you brought that up. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the why. I tell people it's the why. The, the, you have to really spend time mm-hmm. digging deep. And I had a superficial why. You know, a lot of times when I when I coach women, I say, hey, you know, why do you want to do this? It's, oh, I want to make money. OK, well, how much money you want to make? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you need to put a dollar figure that how, yeah. how you know, do you have a skin in the game? What if it takes you five years? What if it takes you 10 years? Thank Are you, you still going to do it? Right. Thank Are people you. using, you know, the buzzword financial freedom? Well, what exactly is financial freedom? Thank you. What does that look like for you? How do you know when you're going to ha- have achieved yeah. financial freedom? Because it looks different for everybody. Right. And so you really have to dig deep and not be on some superficial level why you want to do something. So you should really take time and think about that. Like it really should make you cry. You should get like emotional when you read that why. And that's going to be the thing that keeps you going. Right. When the business look like it's not working. When nobody not signing up for your products. When yes. nobody, not, you know, yes. nobody ain't calling your phone. Yes. You know, that, that's the thing that's going to keep you going regardless. Because at at the end of the day, if you quit, you're never going to succeed. Thank you. Thank you. And I and I'm so happy that we're discussing this because there's so many women out there that are trying, that are doing what they need to do. They're not seeing any results. And we're here to tell you that it is okay. Keep going. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in closing, what is the What's the biggest takeaway or biggest lesson that you want the audience to learn from you, Leslie? I would say the biggest takeaway is just to truly believe. I know it sounds like saying, but you got to believe in who you are, right? Yes. You, you got to truly and know who you belong to, right? Mm-hmm. Believe who you are, know who you belong to, and believe what God says about you. And again, not to seek that validation from other people. Right? Yeah, not to allow other people to dim your light. Like you can have the life you desire to have. That's right. At absolutely. the end of the day, you, you can have it. And so it really goes down to your mindset. Um, just, you know, getting away from negativity, looking around who's in your circle, yes. elevating your thinking. But at the bottom line, only you can change your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. How can we, how can we find you online, Leslie? Yeah, so you can find me on my, I have, you know, um, I'm everywhere. <laughs> so, of course, uh, I have a website. It's leslietmitchell.com. You can find me on Instagram at Leslie T. Mitchell. You can find me now on Facebook at Leslie Thomas Mitchell. Okay. And I'm also on Twitter, t- TikTok, Leslie T. Mitchell. So I'm, I'm okay. on every online platform. You can definitely find me. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Leslie, I just want to say you are definitely an ambitious, powerful woman. And thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to me. I truly, truly appreciate it.
I want to say thank you for having me. I am humble and honored um, even to be invited to be on. So this is this is just a blessing for me. Uh, I just I already I'm like I feel a connection to you. I'm like I'm loving her. <laughs> right? so, I know it's like our energy is connected right? for sure. For right. sure. So you. I appreciate you for even giving me the opportunity to, to share with your audience. And so um, I do not take that lightly. Trust thank me. You. So, thank, thank you. you.